Well, good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to Unfiltered. Uh, Pastor David, welcome. Thank you. Well, you see, <laughs> you see that we're in a new location. We were in uh, the Sea of Galilee last time we recorded, and today we're in Jerusalem. In the Davis Suite. In the. <laughs> I mean, I don't know how, yeah, that's the King Davis. King Davis Suite. King Davis Suite. <laughs> so you can hear King Davis in the background laughing. He's singing. Uh, <laughs> Let it <all>? rise. <laughs> <laughs> well, Pastor, you know, the, our first night in Jerusalem here as we, was last night. Uh, we were sitting at a table, and uh, the people that were next to us, there was a mixture from North Carolina and Texas. And uh, when they asked what church we attended, we had said Calvary Chapel, Chino Valley. And right away they asked about the Jesus Revolution mm -hmm. movie and wanted to know if my pastor knew Chuck Smith. And I said, well, matter of fact, my pastor, David Rosales, uh, Chuck Smith was his pastor. And it's interesting to see even all the way over here in Israel that there has been this influence of the Jesus Revolution that has touched people in many ways. In this church, there were assemblies of God, but they had gone just to see it, you know, for entertainment and mm. was moved by it. So we come all the way out here and we see different churches and even the different different churches are responding to this movie. What's your, what's your feedback or what's your take when you hear about all these people that are being at least moved or exposed? I don't know if I say exposed, but they're, they have a chance to see the Jesus Revolution. I think that's a great thing because they're having an opportunity of getting a snapshot of something that the Lord did 50 plus years ago through Pastor Chuck Smith and what God did in the Calvary Chapel ministries and movements. And it, it's been something that has been continuing, you know, you know, obviously I'll put it this way, the Jesus movement isn't, isn't 50 years old, right? It's, it's since Jesus, you know, right. since he walked. And so, you know, on the face of the earth. And so, it never stopped, but I think that what we're looking at now is just a revisiting mm -hmm. of a historic event. And we're in a time that's very similar, at least uh, in many ways, actually, uh, to what it was like when, when I got saved 52 years ago during that movement called the Jesus Movement. Similar things, we had climate concerns, we had war concerns, you know, we had, uh, you name it, we had the same kinds of concerns, violence in streets and all of that, right? And so it just shows me that people are still interested in, in what Jesus can actually do. And so we hearken back to the past because it's really not that, you know, that distant a past. And, and people are saying, you know, this has happened in, in our lifetime and can it happen again? And so with the, with the movie, you know, again, you have to take it for what it is. It's, it's uh, somebody's remembrance of things that occurred in his life over 50 years ago. And that would be Greg Laurie. And Greg is is uh, pointing out that God moved then, and it's his hope that God will move again. And so the Calvary Chapel Ministries have just, you know, have been part of that. And that, that was really the birth, that's our origin. You know, Calvary Chapel existed before Chuck Smith took the church, so it was called Calvary Chapel. It's not like he named it. You know, he, he uh, was actually appointed to the role of pastor in a church that was called Calvary Chapel. So it's never been about Calvary Chapel. It's always been about the Holy Spirit. Amen. And it's always been about somebody like Chuck and somebody like Kay who had influence on people like Greg Laurie. And Greg remembers and reminisces in some ways. It's theatrical. I've, I haven't seen it, but I've heard it's a theatrical kind of, uh, you know, uh, representation of something that took place 50 plus years ago. And, and Greg is uh, obviously the center of that because he wants people to know you know, his affiliation with that, that movement and how God is still moving today. and all. So from that particular perspective, I think it's a great thing. Do you see, you mentioned earlier, or just in our conversation right now, that very similar things were going on at the time when the movement, the revolution mm -hmm. or the movement began. And so would you say that the church is primed and or in a position for revival? I think the church in general, obviously, it's, it's a very broad word, but I think that there are many people who are evangelical, who are, you know, hoping that God will once again visit us in the way that he had in the past. I think that there's danger right now taking place in the, in the body of Christ at large, and that is that many people have forgotten the uh, importance of preaching the word and calling people to obedience to it. There's a kind of a 
an easy grace kind of thing that's going on, you know, well, I can do whatever I want and still go to heaven. And so somebody is an unrepentant homosexual, but because they love their, their partner or partners for that matter, you know, God is a God of grace and all of that. So I think that one of the things that was highlighted and came to the fore, and I think every movement brings something to the fore so you see certain things. You know, in the Jesus movement, the grace of God was really a highlight of it. We learned, we who were hippies and in, into alcohol and drugs and promiscuity and all of that, we learned that God has a grace that covers over those sins when we, when we ask for forgiveness and come to faith in Christ. Unfortunately, that beautiful understanding of grace has been distorted and changed into permission, and people have forgotten that grace is actually to set us free, not give us permission to remain in bondage, right? What, shall we continue in sin, Paul said, so that grace may abound? Then he went on and said, God forbid. You know, and so, no, of course, that's not how it's supposed to work. And so I think that the, the young people today, the younger generation today that we're seeing coming up, is in terrible and desperate need for an understanding of parameters of behavior, of permissible behavior, of community relationship, of, you know, of what love actually is. These things have to be defined again for this younger generation because they've been pretty much, you know, with, without that kind of uh, oversight and, and teaching, the church always has had the capacity of teaching those things. That's part of our mandate. But the problem is, is because some pastors feel that the word is boring and we're not going to attract young people. They go into the entertainment business. And before you know it, you have the celebrity pastor. Everybody wants to go and hear so-and-so because he's so refreshing because. That wasn't the way it was with Calvary Chapel at the beginning. There are some pockets of that now where celebrities, everything. But, you know, you didn't go to hear Pastor Chuck Smith because he was an exciting, thrilling. He, man, he wasn't. Pastor Chuck was, you know, he, is, he was a Bible teacher. And he was giving to young people something we desperately needed. He, he gave us two things. One is he gave us a father figure, in a sense, because many were lost and they were just out there without a real solid sense of what a dad is. So he was that for many people. But he also had the authority he had the authority that he would present uh, to us through the Word of God, how this is what God expects of us, this is what we can do. And then he supplied us with the answer of how to do that by, by revealing to us our need for the power of the Holy Spirit. So Calvary Chapel was built not on some flamboyant pastor who was out there being cool and everything. People, I think, misunderstand that to this day. He was just a man who simply taught the Word of God in a simple fashion. And there were young people like myself at that time who just wanted to know what truth is. Can you tell me what is true? I see that today. Mm. There are polls that are being taken, and I heard of one just last week, where a good percentage, like well over 50% of young people who are polled say, we just want to know what truth is. Now, if the church doesn't teach truth, where are they going to find right. truth, right? We are the re repository of truth. Mm. And, and because... Because some pastors want to be popular rather than faithful, they end up entertaining people rather than edifying them. And so, yeah, I'm concerned with what that. What was that quote from Spurgeon? Yeah, the clowns are entertaining goats. And that's true. You know, the shepherds feed sheep, but we have pulpits filled with clowns. You know, entertainment centers who are actually just entertaining the goats. And that's very true. So for us to get to that place where we need to be, where the Spirit will move, the, there needs to be a, uh, an urgency with the pastors to teach the pastors word of God. need to know what they are. I mean, you know, I'm not a celebrity. I'm not. I'm not somebody who wants to be famous for for what? For representing the kingdom of God. I mean, that makes no sense to me. You know, and I don't need an audience. You know, what I need is a congregation. I don't need a crowd. I need converts. I need people who follow Christ. Yeah, pastors need to know that that numbers of people don't necessarily mean success in ministry. Because you don't, you know, you don't have to be a good preacher to get a crowd. You know, remember in the days of Ezekiel, he was a great preacher, and God had to say, "Son of man, he's the people are coming from all over. They're standing in street corners talking about you." But, but in fact, what you are is like a skilled vocalist and musician. You know, they hear what you're saying. He says, as a matter of fact, he said, they sit before you as if they're my people, and then God says, "This they are not my people because they hear but they do not do." And so the, the, the real heart of ministry is not just proclaiming a message, 
but expecting those who hear it to actually do it. And, and because many people don't do it, you know, churches may be filled with the goats instead of sheep. Well, thank you, Pastor. I just want, you know, it's interesting that we came all the way out here. And I started thinking about that, the importance of, yeah, you know, this is an opportunity. This movie's promoting an opportunity for people to seek the truth and to have pastors that will speak God's word, led by the Holy Spirit, to, to teach the truth. Because as you mentioned, there's so many truths out there that people are taking anything. It's like a baby who puts anything in their mouth, you know, uh, and, and, and we, as, as you uh, pastors and other pastors that are here have the opportunity to teach God's word, the importance of that. Yeah. Just a, a, a trivia quiz. So what song was it that was mentioned, the Jesus Freaks? Uh, let me see if I get this right. What what artist and what song was it that referenced the Jesus freak in the freaks in the seventies? Oh well, you got me on that one. My mind was on a serious here, and then here you, and then here you go messing the whole thing up. You know, for those of you from my church, John, you're fired, man. It was uh, Jesus freaks in the street. Yes. It was Elton John, and he was. I think it was Levon. Levon. Well, I mean, I mean, to think the the impact that movement made there, where even oh a yeah, even secular that. artists. Was well, not only that, that, but there were there were. Here we go. We we can talk too long about this, <laughs> but there were a lot of things going on. You know, Godspell came out at that time. Jesus Christ Superstar came oh, yeah, out at that time. That's right. Aqualung came out as an antichrist thing. You know, Tommy came out. Yeah. And there were a lot of those things taking place at that time. Was that in response to the Jesus? Yeah, movement? that was. There were. I I would say that we're we're. Where good is evil is present also. When, when Jesus is being exalted, the devil tries to get his due. And today he's using the distorted truth. Well, what he's doing is, he's in, again, we ought to stop yes. because I don't know how long people want to put up with this. <laughs> but what he's doing is he is counterfeiting. You know, instead of Christianity, you have spirituality. Instead of God through Jesus Christ, you have just God, that other. So, yeah, he's, but he's been doing that from, from the beginning with Simon Magus and others in the scriptures that were um, going about speaking in the name of Christ, but in fact were presenting a different Christ, yes, right? Yes. So this isn't new. Anytime God moves, the, the enemy does what he can to check that, to stop it. And that's why the Word of God is so important, so that we can discern truth from error. Amen. And when you have pastors out there who are busy promoting you know, the things that the flesh wants, well, you can drink and go to heaven and you can sleep with your girlfriend because God recognizes that as being marriage and love. And I've heard those things. So when you have people like that who are diluting truth, polluting the body of Christ and causing people to uh, enter into sin, you know, Jesus made a real strong statement of people who do things like that. He said, put a millstone around their neck and drop him into the deepest part of the sea because these people are false teachers so yeah we need to go through the word of god verse by verse chapter by chapter book by book amen well thank you pastor david and and thank you for joining us this uh this afternoon i want to remind you that this sunday we have a guest speaker it's mike mcintosh yeah mike he'll be joining us at 8 30 and 10 45 great opportunity to invite your friends and family to come out and join us and then that following wednesday you'll be back in the pulpit yes <laughs> and we'll be having communion that'll be wednesday evening the 22nd again it's a great opportunity to come and not only hear god's word but to celebrate communion with the church family Amen. so we look forward to seeing you pastor again thank you so much uh greetings from jerusalem and uh, we hope to see you soon. We love you and God bless you.